the great resolution. I will take my reading from the book of Joshua 24. Let me read verse 15. When you get home, you find time to read from verse 1 to the end. It's very important. Choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of our fathers, served beyond the river. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Today, the kind of resolution we are used to is I will not lie again. I will not fornicate again. I will not steal. I will not kill. I will not destroy again. But this resolution can only stand for a moment because the fundamental resolution we have failed to make. This is why we are here. We enter the new year determined to get it right. Before we know it, we have missed the mark. That is, we have sinned. We continue to make a new resolution. Happy New Year, I will not fornicate again. Happy New Year, I will not lie again. Happy New Year, I will not smoke again. Happy New Year, I will not do this again. Happy New Year, I will not do that again. Next year again. Happy New Year, I will not fornicate again. Happy New Year. <laughs> Every year, Happy New Year. And Jesus is the same. Yesterday, last year, this year and the year to come. What is new? This is so because we have failed to make the great resolution, which is the decision, the choice to make God's way the standard for our lives. You have to make a choice. You cannot sit on the fence. We have two walls. Here is Mr. O. <laughs> you are not born here, and you are not born here. Uh -huh. The practice here uh -huh. is truth, which is goodness, love, kindness. And the self control, and so on and so forth. Here, hatred. <laughs> Evil deeds. Anger. Killing, stealing, and destruction. But you are here. Today, you are kind, another day opposite. If the goings are good, Jesus is the Lord. Yeah, yeah. If the goings are tough, Jesus be caused. If the goings are good, praise the Lord. You look here, you belong to this side. 
But if the goings are tough, you begin to despair, mama. Jesus be caused. You now see Jesus in bad light. You have to make a choice. You cannot sit on the fence. There is no neutral kingdom. So, is it that you belong here or you belong here? This is what Joshua meant. The Bible says, he put to his people to choose between God Almighty and the gods of their forefathers. Joshua did this because he knew that serving God is the only way to peace and comfort. Amen. Why serving Satan is a sure way to pain, bitterness, and death. The Bible says he did not make it compulsory because he knew salvation was personal. He realized that many of his people in Israel were sitting on the fence. That they were not cold, they were not hot. And there was no neutral kingdom. He realized this. That was why he said to them, my people, choose today whom you will serve. He put to them in life, man is given freedom to choose from many alternatives that surround him. The choice he makes determines who he is before God. Joshua knew this. That was why he put to his people to choose. He knew that serving God is the only way, only rule to peace and comfort. And serving Satan is a sure way. Let someone say, sure way. Sure way. To bitterness. If you want bitterness, just follow Satan. He's a manufacturer. <laughs> <laughs> You want peace and comfort? Jesus. Today, many are known as Christians by what they confess only. Remember the Bible says, by their fruit, we shall know them. I'm a Christian. I'm a pastor, Pastor T.B. Joshua, general overseer of the synagogue. Coming out. Jesus is alone, I'm telling you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm telling you, you must obey God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Many are known by what they confess, by what they preach, by what they teach. Only, but the Bible says, by their fruit, we shall know them. But these are people the Bible refers to as impostors. This is not the kind of choice. Joshua made when he said to his people, Choose today whom you will serve. He made rare commitment. There's someone say rare commitment. Yeah. I mean this. I want you to listen to this. It is true you are convinced that Jesus is the Redeemer. That is why you are here. It is true you are convinced that Jesus is a comforter. That is why you are here. It is true you are convinced that Jesus is a healer because he has healed one of your family. He has healed 
one of your friends. He has healed your mom, your dad, yourself. But you are not yet converted. If you are converted, you will abandon your old way. The Bible says, all things pass away. All things become new. One thing is to be convinced. Another thing is to be converted. To be converted is to obey his will. To be converted is to obey his command. Mm. This is what the Bible means by knowing God is not only to see his works, but learning his way. Knowing God is not only to see his works, but learning his way. It is true that you are convinced beyond reasonable doubt that Jesus is law. You are convinced that Jesus is redeemer because he has healed. He has saved one of your family. He has healed one of your friends. And you have seen it on the video clips. You believe. That is why you are here. But you are not converted. If you are converted, you will not shout Happy New Year. <laughs> if you are converted, you will not look forward to a new year but a consolidation of women. A consolidation of women. That show that you are not converted. Everyone shout happy new. What is new? It's our sin. <laughs> our failure to keep our resolution makes year new. You can make it new, old. To be converted is to obey his word. His commands. Many of us here today are only convinced about Jesus, but not converted yet. Jesus is looking for those who are truly converted, not those who are merely convinced. If you are going to serve the Lord, be prepared because anything close to Jesus receives attack. Tell your neighbor, if you are going to serve the Lord, be prepared because anything close to Jesus receives attack. I mean, if you are going to serve the Lord, be prepared for times when you will be put to the test. When trouble comes, keep calm and be determined. When sickness comes, keep calm and be determined. When trial comes, keep calm, be determined. Because there's God's appointed time. A time for trials and a time for victory. 
if you are only convinced about Jesus, what you see, what your circumstances look like, could be circumstances of natural birth, could be sickness, could be poverty, could be whatever you are facing, could be natural circumstances of failure, whatever can affect your relationship with God. If you are only what? Convinced about Jesus. This is why many people, when they are not healed, they begin to see Jesus in the bad light. They begin to see the prophet in the bad light. Say, are you sure he's the man of God? I, in fact, what I heard, you know, I begin to believe what I heard about him. <laughs> when you are healed, prophet is good. <laughs> Today, everyone desires breakthrough. Whereas, Failure most times serves to keep us from a new level. Today, everyone desires healing. Whereas, sickness most times keeps us from a new level in life. Today, everyone desires freedom. Whereas, imprisonment must stand south to keep us from a new level. Imprisonment must stand south to reform us for a better position in God. Imprisonment must stand south to preserve us for redemption. Finally, what is your situation? It will be too soon or too early to murmur or jubilate or despair without finding out from God. Your case may be to preserve you. Your case may be to reform you for a better position in God. Your case may be to keep you for a new level in life. Whatever situation you find yourself today, do not allow it to dictate the direction of your prayer. You have a headache. You begin to say, heal me, heal me, heal me, heal me, heal me, heal me. Whereas that headache is to keep you for a better position. Remember Paul Apostle. The thorn in his flesh. Three times he went to God. Heal me. Each time God said, my grace is sufficient for you. He was a man of God. He was a man of the truth. Here is a man that was converted, but you are still convinced. But Paul Apostle was converted, but you are not converted. You are convinced. But if not because he was converted, we will have done what you are doing today. Because each time you say, God, hear me, hear me, and God is not answer you, you are bad on your faith. The pain you have in your stomach is not unto death for the glory of God.
Joshua knew that those that are destined, I mean bound for heaven must be willing servant. That is, willing servant means those who do not do what many do, but those who do what the best do. I mean, those who do not look to others for what to do. I'm a type that believe I must do what the best do. I don't believe doing what many do. This is my destiny. I am created to do what the best do, not to do what many do. This is what I'm born for. This is what I'm going to live for. And this is what I'm going to die for. I know that serving God is a thing of the mind. Right from my small age, when I was small, I used to ask myself, the kind of young man I would like to be. Now I'm a young man, I keep asking myself, the kind of old man I would like to be. Because I have the opportunity to see the success and failure in the life of others. The problem you have, you look to others for what to do. That is why you are like others. You speak like others. You act like others. You sit like others. You look like others. You think like others. You reason like others. When the mind agree in relationship with God, what you see, what your circumstances look like, what people say, what people do concerning your relationship with God cannot affect it. So thank you very much. My name is Bartels. I'm from Ghana. I came to visit with the man of God. And um, the lesson this morning is very significant. All along, um, we've had to make a choice. The choice of being convinced and the choice of being converted in our relationship with Christ. We've been making resolutions every year and breaking them every year and renewing them every year. But the real resolution is to determine to walk in the ways of God. That would mean that at the end of the year, it will only be a consolidation of what we have been doing in the previous year and not a new resolution. I think I'm taking this back to Ghana. Thanks be to God. I'm Laura Westgate from Johannesburg and um, I've been serving the Lord for 20 years and I realize I've never followed his ways. And this morning, I realized that I'm going to abandon myself. <laughs> and I'm going to be converted for him. Thank you very much, Ma. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. My name is Helen. I am from Cyprus. I was very excited uh, by hearing this message on the uh, word that he says that uh, when you want to follow Jesus, you need to do the best too. It reminds me of Jesus when he left his parents and he went to the tabernacle to be with his father. And uh, the parents, they were looking at him. And when they found him, he says, didn't I tell you that I need to be with my father? So I saw this in this experience with uh, T.B. Joshua. And it touched me so much because uh, it's very important to do what God puts in your heart to do. And sometimes when you you are a family or you have people around you, there are some things you cannot do because you have to speak with the others, to share with the others, and everybody cannot understand what do you really have in you. But today I, I received something from the Lord that 
I want to do the best for God, but I need his help and his ability in me, so I will hear only his voice, so I will be a helper for the others as well, instead of obeying things that are not of God and do wrong things. Thank you very much. Well, my name is Theophilus Cambero, I'm from Namibia. This message is clear, it's inspiring, and it is touching. It is time for us to realize and it is time for us to weigh ourselves, where we are. Are we in the fence or in the world of truth? All in all, let us dedicate ourselves with willingness to save Jesus. He's the only solution to all our problems we have. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's a message of hope, a message of truth for everyone out there. And I believe you have something to say? My, my name is Pastor Cynthia Rendo from Botswana. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Prophet T.B. Joshua, especially for sharing his personal testimony. It has done a great thing in my life. And uh, for sharing that message for the new year, the great resolution. I want to say to the body of Christ, let's rise up. Let's come out of our comfort zones. Let's come out from the fence and decide to follow Christ and make a commitment and be converted. Yes, we are convinced of many, many things. We profess to be Christians. We profess to know Christ. We profess to be walking with him, but we are truly not converted. I am converted today from this message. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's clap for our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs>